in diploid organisms, there's a 2n number of chromosomes in every single somatic cell. So for example, in humans, every single somatic cell has 46 individual chromosomes or 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes under normal conditions. Now, a karyotype is basically a pictorial description of all the chromosomes found within that particular organism, within that particular individual. Now, in humans, every normal human karyotype will show 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes or 46 individual chromosomes. Now, what exactly does a karyotype in a human actually look like? Well, let's take a look at the following picture that describes the human karyotype under normal conditions. So, we have chromosome pair number one, chromosome pair number two, chromosome pair number three, all the way to chromosome pair number 22. And all of these chromosome pairs, one, through 22 are known as autosomal homologous chromosome pairs. The final chromosome pair, the 23rd one, is called the sex homologous chromosome pair. Now in males, in normal males, we have one X sex chromosome and one Y sex chromosome. And in normal females, we have one X and the other one is also an X. So notice that because each one of these pairs consists of two individual chromosomes, that means under normal conditions, we have two multiplied by 23 or 46 individual chromosomes within the human karyotype. So in every single somatic cell of our body under normal conditions, these are the chromosomes that we're going to find in the nucleus of those somatic cells. So now that we know what a karyotype actually looks like in a normal, healthy human individual, let's now discuss chromosomal abnormalities. So one of the common type of chromosomal abnormalities is aneuploidy. So in some individuals, within the somatic cells of some individuals, we can either have an extra copy of a chromosome or we can have one less chromosome than we normally have. So we can either have 47 chromosomes or 45 chromosomes. And in either case, these conditions are known as aneuploidy. So once again, as we saw just a moment ago when we discussed the human karyotype, we saw that every single one of these chromosomes came with a pair. And this is known as disomic, so uh, a, um, a disomic condition. And so each one of these pairs describes a disomic condition because we have only two per pair. Sometimes, however, we can either have a trisomic individual or we can have a monosomic individual. And what that means is one of these pairs actually has an extra copy of a chromosome. So three in this particular case, or we can have one less so we can have a monosomic condition. So that is what we mean by aneuploidy. Aneuploidy is a type of chromosomal abnormality in which we either have an extra copy of one of the chromosomes or we have one less than we should normally have. Now, the next question is, why exactly does aneuploidy actually take place? How does it arise? Well, there are two types of cell cycle processes. We have mitosis and we have meiosis. And both of these processes can actually lead to aneuploidy. And the specific process that leads to aneuploidy is known as non-disjunction. So the most common reason for aneuploidy is non-disjunction of chromosomes that takes place during anaphase of mitosis or during anaphase of meiosis. So let's begin by focusing on non-disjunction taking place in mitosis. Now, normally what happens in mitosis, if once again we look at this karyotype, so mitosis is the process by which a somatic cell in our body chooses to divide and that somatic cell produces two identical daughter cells that have the same exact genetic information. So what happens during mitosis 
in, uh, uh, during insert phase, what happens is every single one of these chromosomes is replicated. So this chromosome is replicated, this chromosome is replicated, this one is replicated, this one is replicated, and so forth. And let's say if this one is replicated, what we produce is a pair of identical cystochromatids. Remember, cystochromatids are two chromatids, two chromosomes that are exactly the same. They have the same exact genetic information. Now, in this particular picture, instead of drawing out all these 46 pairs of cystochromatids, we're only going to look at two to basically save space. So this is our chromosome, our, uh, this is our somatic cell, and inside the somatic cell, let's say we have chromosome 1 and chromosome 2, and we replicate them, so these are the identical cystochromatids. So these two are identical, and these two are identical. Now, normally, what happens under normal conditions is these mitotic spindle apparatuses form, they extend these fibers, and these fibers attach themselves onto these sections on each one of these cystochromatids. And so during metaphase of mitosis, we have these extensions and these connections that form, and normally, these two will move to that side, these other cystochromatids will move to the other side, and in humans, we have 46 chromosomes moving this way, 46 chromosomes moving the other way, and so during anaphase, we should have, in this particular picture, we should see two chromosomes moving this way, and two chromosomes moving the other way, but, if non-disjunction take pl uh, takes place, what that means is one of these fibers actually fails to form a proper connection with one of the cystochromatids. And so let's say that this connection formed, this connection formed, and this connection formed, this connection did not actually form. And so now what happens during anaphase, when these fibers begin to pull these cystochromatids apart, these are pulled apart correctly, so these begin moving to opposite poles, but this one doesn't move apart correctly. In fact, this pair of identical cystochromatids moves to the other side, to one side, and this one fails to move to this side. And so at the end, when we produce our two daughter cells, these will no longer be identical because they will not carry the same amount of genetic information. In this particular case, we're going to have a daughter cell, a somatic cell, that has one extra chromosome than it should have. So we have a trisomic condition, and this one will lack that particular chromosome, and so it will have a monosomic condition. Now, one important point must be made about mitosis. If mitosis, so let's suppose I'm a normal individual, and what that means is inside every somatic cell of my, of, of my body, I have 23 pairs or 46 individual chromosomes. Now, if inside one of my somatic cells, mitosis takes place and non-disjunction takes place, then what that means is I will only have this aneuploidy condition within these two daughter cells that are formed as a result of the non-disjunction in mitosis. All the other somatic cells of my body will still be normal. And that's exactly why non-disjunction taking place in mitosis is not as dangerous as non-disjunction taking place in meiosis. Because in meiosis, as we'll see in just a moment, what ends up happening is all the somatic cells of that individual will have an abnormal normal number of chromosomes, they will have aneuploidy, while in this case, only these somatic cells produced via this non-disjunction mitosis will have that aneuploidy condition. So, although this still can be dangerous because it can lead to abnormal cells, it can form cancer cells, as long as those abnormal cells are actually destroyed either by our immune system or by the process of uh, uh, program cell death, if that happens, it is not as dangerous as in the case of meiosis. So let's move on to non-disjunction taking place in meiosis. Now, 
because meiosis actually consists of meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, that means there are two different places, two different times where non-disjunction can actually take place. So let's begin by assuming that non-disjunction only takes place during, uh, during meiosis 1. So once again, we're dealing with uh, only, well, if we take a look at our uh, normal human karyotype, technically speaking, we should be showing all these individual chromosomes within the cell. But to save time, I'm only going to focus on the 23rd chromosome pair, our sex chromosome pair. So we're not going to consider the autosomal chromosomes in this particular case. So before meiosis actually takes place and before this male individual can produce sperm cells, those chromosomes must replicate themselves during the process of interphase. And so the X chromosome is replicated to produce this identical X chromosome and the Y chromosome is also replicated to produce this identical cystochromatid. So normally what should happen during normal conditions is during metaphase one of meiosis, these pairs basically line up at the equator of our cells. So in humans, we're going to have 23 pairs of these chromosomes line up at the middle. And, during, during, uh, and then during anaphase, if these connections are formed correctly, these 23 pairs of chromosomes are basic, basically moved to opposite poles. Now, if non-disjunction takes place, what that means is, once again, we fail to form this fiber attachment. And so instead of this attaching here and this attaching here, let's say what happens is this attaches here and also attaches there. And so now what happens is we have non-disjunction takes place and both of these pairs of chromosomes basically move to one side of the pole. And so when we have, when we produce those two cells, one of the cells will lack the sex chromosome and the other one will have an extra pair of sex chromosomes. So this is where non-disjunction took place in meiosis one, in anaphase one of meiosis. Now let's suppose we have metaphase two take place and metaphase two takes place normally. So all these chromosome pairs line up at the equator as shown and these fibers form correctly and we have the separation of these chromosomes to that side and these chromosomes to the other side. And so in this particular case, we form these two identical sperm cells and in this particular case, we form these two sperm cells that don't have those sex chromosomes. So all of these sperm cells are abnormal because in this case, in case one and two, we have one more than we should. Remember, each sperm cell should have only one sex chromosome. In this case, we have two. In this case, we have none. So what will happen next? Well, remember the entire purpose of forming the sperm cells by the male individual was to basically take the sperm cell and combine it with an egg cell. So let's suppose we take either one of these two sperm cells, our aneuploid sperm cell, and we combine it with a, with a female normal egg cell. Remember, egg cells always, or normal egg cells, always have one X chromosome. Now, if these two gametes actually combine, with what we're, uh, we're going to form a zygote that has the aneuploidy condition. And what that means is we're going to have two of these X chromosomes, one of these Y chromosomes. And what happens is we know under normal conditions, we should have one X, one Y or one X, one X. But because of this rearrangement, we're going to have an extra copy of that X chromosome. And because we have an extra copy, instead of having 46 chromosomes, we're going to have 47 chromosomes in this zygote. And when the zygote divides to form the many different cells of that individual, every single somatic cell of that individual will have this aneuploid condition. And that's why non-disjunction in meiosis is much more dangerous than non-disjunction in, in mitosis. Because if it takes place in meiosis, 
every somatic cell of the body will end up having this aneuploid condition, but in mitosis, it's only those two daughter cells that are formed by that process that will have that process, uh, that will have that condition. So as long as our immune system can protect our body from those abnormal cells, we should have no problem. So if a normal X cell combines with either sperm cell one or sperm cell two, the zygote will have an extra X chromosome copy. So we'll have XXY. Now, if the normal X cell combines with either cell, sperm cell three or four, we're going to have a zygote in which we're going to lack the Y chromosome. We're going to have only one X chromosome, and this condition is known as XO, where O means we don't have that second sex chromosome. So this is non-disjunction taking place in meiosis one, more specifically in anaphase one of meiosis. Now we can also have non-disjunction taking place in meiosis two, more specifically in anaphase two of meiosis. So